succubus is the female version of the spiritual spouse. It is the demon that has sexual intercourse with a sleeping man in his dream. Secubus is the female demon that attacks men while they sleep to have sexual intercourse with them. She uses either the face of his wife or someone else close to him or many times even just an unknown person so there are no kids here I'll have to be a little bit explicit if you have had times as a man where you have dreamt that you are making love to your wife in your dream that's not your wife that's a demon and it's called succubus also if as a man you have dreamt that you are having sex with a woman in your dream that's not a woman that is real it is the demon called succubus and then you have incubus which is the male version of spiritual spouse it is the demon that has sexual intercourse with a woman while they're sleeping and the same thing can happen the wife might dream that she is having intercourse with her husband in her dream, but that's not the husband, that's actually a demon. But it's not limited to husband, it can be whichever other male, any other man, even with a face that you don't recognize. These are spirits that attack women in their dreams to have intercourse with them I also want you to note before I continue that incubus which is the male version that comes to women at night and succubus that comes to males at night to have intercourse these demons are not um, reserved only for the opposite sex succubus and incubus can also attack the same sex in the night and that's when you are going to have homosexual dreams lesbian dreams it's the same spirit that is working Incubus and succubus. Through repeated sexual encounters, they attach themselves to people and hinder their relationship with another human. If you're listening, say amen. As a result, the person will eventually experience these signs. First, you will battle with consistent wet dreams or dreams of induced orgasms while you are sleeping, while you are dreaming. Meaning that the man will have an erection while sleeping has nothing to do with the human partner at this moment and that man will actually have an orgasm and an ejaculation they will wake up finding themselves their, their underwear wet from an orgasm and their partner wasn't even touching them or maybe the partner wasn't even sleeping with them that night but they find themselves in wet dreams 
that's because succubus was present that night whether you could have seen it or not and then vice versa the woman also become aroused in their dream because incubus comes in the night and also that woman can experience what we call wet dream having an orgasm when there wasn't even a human partner there all of this suggests that incubus and succubus was there and is inside of you and has to come out you have to yield to deliverance so these wet dreams spiritual orgasms uh, night dream arousals at the beginning can be something pleasurable but you must realize that you're dealing with demons and when you deal with demons they will not have their belly full they are spirits and will never have enough and it will come to the place where instead of becoming pleasurable it's going to become a torment where you realize I don't want this anymore and that torment will usually be followed by guilt by condemnation and by accusation because as a Christian you realize that something is wrong here these demons succubus and incubus delight in inflicting pain emotional pain fear and mental anguish the guilt and the shame can be so great that you would never ever share this with anyone at any time because it's such a shame and it brings such guilt such pain such fear such anguish and that's exactly what the devil wants because if we can keep it hidden and never mention it then he will always be there and the problem can be a lifetime and even get worse ultimately what they want to do is to destroy the very life of God that is inside of you feeling overpowered by an addiction to pornography or lust or other sexual perversions is what succubus and incubus does i'll repeat that feeling an addiction an overpowering addiction to pornography or lust or sexual perversions is exactly what succubus and incubus does and the more you yield to it the more you give in to it the stronger or maybe I should say the more hold they will have over your life in the sexual area again it will eventually lead to an inability to get married or marriages ending up in separation and divorce so at times some people are able to escape from the the control of these demons now remember i'm not expecting you to know this but that's why i'm teaching it to you but there are some people that actually escape by their own strong willpower from these controlling sexual demons that they actually get married because their intent is for you never to get married and they will make sure that no matter what man or what woman comes into your life they try to stop marriage but marriage at times become possible but they continue to work behind the scenes that that marriage will be in heavy affliction there will always be trouble 
until that marriage or that relationship is broken and then you look for another one and then the same cycle continues in your life little or no affection or spiritual drive for your human spouse when you have succubus and incubus it's just like when you are having an earthly affair in the human realm when you are married and you are having an affair a sexual affair which the bible calls or calls adultery what happens is is that because you are sexually active with the affair you are left with no affection for your spouse well it's the same thing that happens with these sexual demons because they are sexually active in your life having sexual intercourse with you the human being at night even many times to the point of orgasm you the human whether husband or wife you come to the place where really you have no sexual drive for your earthly partner it's gone now if you're up there in your years in your age that kind of comes natural because the testosterone falls and you're not as sexually active as you used to be but if you're still young and you're troubling with affection for your spouse these demons definitely have activity in your life whether you are married single or committedly living with a partner and ever have a dream or see yourself being wedded to a man or a woman whose face you cannot see we're talking about in the dream now this is spiritual or getting married to someone you know rest assured that there is a spirit spouse operating in your life if you have had a dream or maybe more than once you dream that you're getting married whether you're already married or you're single and you're getting to a married to a person you may know but you're not really married to them you're talking about two very lustful spirits here that are operating in that case you will find it difficult to get married in the physical realm if you are having these wedding dreams you'll find it difficult to get married in the physical realm or find your marriage in the physical realm to always be troublesome and difficult the demon will stop you from getting your breakthrough if for instance like i already said you manage to escape and you get married in the natural realm you will have difficulty in having children sometimes these demons will bring barrenness infertility why because succubus and incubus are very very jealous spirits you know if you've ever had a jealous man or a jealous woman in your life these spirits are very very jealous and that's why they will prevent you from having an effective earthly relationship because in their eyes in their demonic eyes they are madly in love with you and in their eyes they are believing that you belong to them so they will do everything possible in their jealousy to make sure they wreak havoc in your relationships here on earth some people discover that while sleeping they find themselves breastfeeding a baby that's why i have the lights darkened so that nobody can see our expressions but if ever you as a woman dream that you're breastfeeding a child 
this tells us that succubus, incubus, have even had spiritual children with you. Please let me remind you that this is not in the earthly realm. You do not have a child in the earthly realm. We're talking about a spiritual realm. The spiritual realm is as real or even more real than the earthly realm here. So as a woman, if you've ever dreamt that you have had a child bre breastfeeding from your breast, that tells you that this demon, one of these demons are there. The following are the different types of spiritual spouse. There are three different types. Number one, first is the unconscious spirit spouse. In this case, after the demon has had sexual intercourse with its victim, the victim will wake up and not remember anything that happened in the dream. And that's why tonight I had you pray that prayer with me. Because these demons can and many times come to you at night to have sexual intercourse. And when you wake up in the dream, it was as real as hell. But when you wake up, you can't remember a thing. All of a sudden, like it's blank. And that's why I had you prayed that prayer because these same demons are the one that will blind you from remembering them and knowing that they were there. Number two, here is the semi-conscious spiritual spouse. This type of spirit spouse appears to its victims using the face of the victim's wife or husband. And if you're not careful, you will think that it is your husband or your wife that is appearing to you. Whenever you have such dreams and see a close relative or a loved one having sexual intercourse with you, because remember, it's not just limited to your husband or your wife. It can go all the way into your relative bloodline. People you don't even know. Please know that this is not your relative, but a demon behind these semi-conscious spiritual spouse. This could also be likened to the situation whereby some demons use the face of late relatives. One of your family, whether it's uncle, aunt, anyone that has passed on, cousin that is now dead, incubus or succubus can actually use one of these individuals the way they looked to come to you at night. And you will think that it was your relative. And these things can become quite scary after a while. Number three, the third kind of spiritual spouse is called multiple spirit spouse or polygamous spirit spouse. Such spirit spouse comes with different faces. Uses the faces of different people. Like wife, husband, a parent, exes, meaning ex-husbands or ex-wives. It can even come as a church member. You went to bed, you prayed, you slept, you thanked God for the day. And one night you just had a dream of you having sex with somebody that comes to the same church like you do. These demons are quite capable of these things. Spiritual spouses. You will think 
those people are the ones doing the act. And if you're not careful, you'll start to avoid these people. Let's just say you've had a dream. That you have had sex in your dream with somebody that comes to this church. The demon's intention is for you to start to avoid that person. Because you may think that person is bad or that person want to harm you or that person have wrong intentions towards you and then what the demon is actually doing is separating you from your brother and sister in Christ because remember this wasn't a real act this was a dream and that's what these demons do now how do they get in they're there for a reason you know the Bible says that a curse does not alight without a cause. Whenever there's demonic activity, there is a cause for it. And it might not be you personally, but there was a cause that gave these demons right to get in to do what they're doing. So here are some few open doors that succubus and incubus can come in to attack. Number one, witchcraft. Unfortunately, many of us never had the choice of witchcraft. Many of our parents, involuntarily because we were infants or children, took us to witch doctors. And as innocent as we are, we're still guilty because we participated even involuntarily in witchcraft. So that's how it can come in. But it can also come in when you personally, even to the slightest degree, were personally involved in witchcraft, incubus and succubus steps in. Especially, especially when the witchcraft had to do with love potions, spells concerning relationships. You know, you were losing a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you didn't want to lose them and so you went and you paid or visited a witch doctor because you wanted to keep that boyfriend, that girlfriend or that husband or that wife. Those are huge open doors for succubus and incubus to come in and start their activity whatever kind of witchcraft it was it's a viable open door for these sexual demons to come in and start their activity number two sexual sins remember I told you opening this teaching tonight that you are not condemned, you are not judged by God. You know you're forgiven for every sexual activity you have ever done in the past. However, even though we might or are fully forgiven by God, these sexual sins, if they're not renounced and broken, gives succubus and incubus the right, even after being a Christian, to come in. And visit you with sexual activities in night dreams. Any form of sexual sin or perversion is one of the most common open door for a spiritual spouse to lay hand over you. The sexual sin could be anything from fornication. Meaning at any given time in your youthful years. You had intercourse with anyone before marriage. Or through adultery, after being married, that's an open door through the sexual activity. Bestiality, this one is kind of rare, but it's out there. There are people that have actually had intercourse with animals. That's an open door. Homosexuality, Lesbianism, masturbation, or any other sexual acts, including viewing and consuming pornography. 
as subtle as it may sound, these are open doors to these sexual demons. It's almost like this become a breeding ground and these demons have an insatiable appetite for sexual perversion and sexual immorality. Thirdly, through generational spirit spouses. And here is where renouncing becomes very important. Because you don't know if your father or your mother had these dreams. You don't know if your grandfather or your grandmother had these dreams. You don't know if your third or fourth generation had these dreams. You weren't there. But because any of them might have had these kinds of dreams, it was handed down to them also from even former generations. And it has to be renounced. In some cases, spirit, husband, spirit, wife, spirit, attach themselves through bloodline. It occurs in cases where someone in the previous generation was involved in witchcraft, sexual perversion, rape, molestation, or human sacrifice. You know what molestation is? Not necessarily rape, but heavy fondling, and taking advantage and abusing sexual parts, private parts of another human being without, necess un without necessarily penetrating. And of course, rape. Number four, molestation or, or abuse. While it doesn't sound fair, Demons view the act of molestation or abuse as an open door and often already associated with the sexual perversion of the molester. The person that molested you, if they did. The person that raped you, if they did. That same spirit, even though you were perfectly innocent. See, there are certain things we will never no one realize until we get to heaven. But that same spirit from that person that raped or molested or took advantage of you in some sexual way, that same spirit from that person jumps on the innocent victim and starts their whole cycle again. Number five, soul ties. When the person that you have had a soul tie with walks away from your life, it results in the breaking of your soul into fragments. The enemy takes advantage of this weak point and comes in as a spiritual spouse. You know, demons so replicate the activity of humans. Because what, what do a lot of men or boys do when a woman is going through a difficult time with their partner men actually see know realize and instead of respect and want to help the poor female that is going through some deep emotional pain they jump on the opportunity and start to flirt and want to take advantage of the poor weak woman in that state see what they can get out of it and that's exactly what demons do what incubus and succubus do in the weakness of that female or male at that time they jump in and start to work through that fragmentation in the soul tie and that's why we need to make sure that wherever you stand tonight whatever you are bearing witness with tonight here concerning this teaching it's time to do battle and remember you have already won. You're already saved. You already belong to the Lord. You're not condemned. You're not judged. But you want to make sure that whatever hold this devil has on you, it has to leave. 
every soul tie connecting me to a spirit husband or wife I break it in the name of Jesus we'll say it again every soul tie connecting me to a spiritual husband or wife I break it in the name of Jesus any power pretending to be my spouse in my dreams I now renounce and command you to die in the name of Jesus every wedding ring of the spirit spouse in my spiritual hand in the name of Jesus I renounce it remove it and I command it to catch fire every every wedding certificate linking to a spirit husband wife in the name of Jesus catch fire anything planted into my body to seduce me by the spirit husband wife in the name of Jesus catch fire Holy Ghost fire arise protect my body with your fire in Jesus name Oh God arise and repair any damage done to my body by the ministry of spirit spouse every wicked power using the face of a familiar person to sleep with me in my dream I renounce it and must die now in Jesus name now I want you to go home and every day if you know that this is one of your trouble in your life you go home and you every day do this until you feel like it's really being birthed from your heart how to be delivered, delivered, how to be free? Well, first of all, you need to know that deliverance is your portion. That's why Jesus came, to set us free. Living in freedom and deliverance from a spiritual spouse requires a disciplined devotion to God. Number one, how to be free? Go beyond just a sinner's prayer or being a lukewarm Christian and devote your life to Jesus. Not just give your life to Jesus. Devote your life to Him. Anything that is not of Jesus, don't make it a part of your life. You have to become fully devoted to Jesus Christ. Movies that are not of Christ, throw it out. Things on Facebook that are not condoning holiness, throw it out. Books that are not... Um, pictures whatever it is that are not anything that would damage your devotion to Christ you must get rid of it instantly Two, set your body apart and declare it as that which belongs to the Holy Spirit bought by the blood of Jesus and become his temple when you come to the altar tonight give God your body he created it he paid for it he wants to use it. Tell him tonight I declare this my body to be your temple. And I will no longer use it for anything that defiles it. Number three. Renounce that spiritual spouse and break its grip over your life. By believing in the authority already given to you by Jesus Christ. Number four. Abort anything planted by the spirit spouse in your life confess declare and uproot any seed offspring planted in your life as a result of these encounters number five if the torment continues then seek deliverance right here at the altar the bible says jesus came to give us life in abundance that includes beautiful god ordained relationships he will set free those who seek him for he gives his beloved sleep and provides to them life in abundance